Do you think that they're afraid of my voice? Yeah, they are. I don't have no guns. I got something in my mouth that's more powerful than guns. Most of you can't shoot straight anyway. But hell, with the truth that I speak, I don't miss a damn soul. And I didn't miss none of you today. Allah's truth found you wherever you are. When Carol Mosley Braun was a U.S. Senator, she came and had dinner with me one day. And we were talking about things and I remember how these words rolled out of her mouth. But you know, minister, they can arrest you for treason. I said, well, before they get to me, here comes Gaddafi. The last time I sat with that brother, my brother, here's what I told him. I said, brother Gaddafi, America will never forgive you for what you've done and they'll come among you only to destroy you and the revelation that you have brought into being. He patted me on my leg as if to say, I know, brother. He didn't say a word. He just patted my leg. He didn't have no problem until he let them in. <laughs> ah, you gonna hear me today. I was in Iraq three days before the bombs fell in 91. There were Muslim Sunni mosques. There were Shia mosques. There were Christian churches and Jewish temples and synagogues. And even under Saddam Hussein, there was peace among them. Isn't that right, Brother Baghdadi? But when America went in, under the guise that he had weapons of mass destruction. Did they find any? So what was shock and awe about? You want to bring Gaddafi before the International Criminal Court? What about Bush? What about Rumsfeld? What about a government that lied to the American people and caused the lives of hundreds of thousands to be lost? Right Obama looks like easy pickings now. because his house appears to be in disarray. I listened to our president the other night. I watched the way he talked to his friend, Mubarak. Mubarak been there for 30 years the friend of every American president. So whatever he was not doing for his people, America sure knew it. Well, when did we find out that we should be for the people? After the people rose up. America tried to get in 
behind the cot. They need to put America out of Iraq, out of Afghanistan, because the trouble didn't begin until the troublemaker came in. He's the sociopathic mind I was talking about. When they set up the embassy, practically all the members of the embassy were CIA. They aren't there for peace. They're there to destabilize. The people are still gathering in Tahrir Square. They're not satisfied. Well, that fell off the radar. Then there was Bahrain. America got a naval base there. He killed some of his people too. I didn't hear the president say, well, now, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. He did, you know, a little tepid little thing, you know. You all be careful now, you shouldn't harm people who are innocent. But after a while, he got strong on Mubarak. See, there's a frog in the dragon's mouth. When the dragon swallows a frog, you might hear it, bleep, 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 bleep. But it's really the dragon talking through the frog. You didn't hear me. Barack is a good man but he's under the control of bad people. Barack is a good man, but he's under the control of bad people. He brought some of them around him because he's a constitutional lawyer, not an economist. He brought people from Goldman Sachs. So they encouraged him to take that money and bail out Wall Street. Now they're accusing him of breaking the American economy when it was $12 trillion in debt when he got in the office. They don't talk about Bush's $800 billion that he borrowed and nobody know where the hell the money went. So they're setting Obama up. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Now, the Zionists say, look, we got a chance. Gaddafi's weak now. Let's send Hillary to Switzerland and get the United Nations to come on board so we can give a military response. So they're building up all this killing. See? But you don't really know that that's true. Do we? That, that's what they're saying. Some of it could be, but hell, you got to check a devil. You got to check a liar. And you don't have the means by which to check them because you're a slave to the corporate media of America. Isn't that a shame what he's doing to his people? Well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. When your people don't have jobs and they're out of their homes and they're living in the streets and they're angry and they rise up, do you think the police are coming to tell you, now just a minute, Negroes, you people we're doing the best we can. 
Superintendent Weiss ordered 17,000 automatic rifles with armor-piercing bullets for the Chicago Police Department. And I asked him, what are you expecting? I didn't get an answer. I know what they're expecting. They're expecting you to rise up. And I guarantee you, they're coming. And when they come, they're coming to kill. Mark my words. White folk in America are armed to the teeth. And they're angry with their own government. Do you think that they coming to tell white Americans that are armed? Just a moment. We'll straighten it out. We're now listening to the Tea Party. Everything is going to be all right. They'll shoot them down like dogs in the street. Mark my words, this is coming to America in a very short while. Now, President Obama, if you allow the Zionists to push you to mount a military offensive against Gaddafi, and you go in and kill him, and kill his sons as you did with Saddam Hussein and his sons I'm warning you this is a Libyan problem let the Libyans solve their problem among themselves now Lastly, if America goes to war, President Obama, like Franklin Delano Roosevelt, may be forced to sign an executive order that he's not fully in agreement with to take Farrakhan off the streets and charge him with sedition and treason. I told my followers that when they come, I don't want you fighting them because they're only coming to kill you. I've been expecting them. I know what I got to go through, <laughs> but I know I'm going to be the winner. That I know. <laughs> 